Okay, so, like I said, this quest is actually new to me. And we do technically still have more to do on it. We can speak to Zavaleta in the ward's access corridor just off the Presidium to see if we can help him with his drinking. Huh. Okay. Maybe we do that before we head out. In full. Obviously, we're now in Normandy, but we haven't actually left the Citadel just yet. So let's just pop on out here real quick, and why don't we use the, the same team real quick as well? Didn't do too much with them. Okay. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. And that was also interesting to see, I believe... They refer to our mother as Exo Shepherd, meaning she is functionally the same position as Commander or Exo Presley does on the Normandy. On the Citadel and uncovers a full-blown crime syndicate. Okay, so where exactly is he? Because the description was a uh, a little tough to decipher or at least was he's kind of in a strange place in between different areas so he's in the ward's access corridor just off the presidium okay trying to remember where that is I think no presidium does that mean I think we go well ward's access how about that <laughs> that sounds helpful And it's down here, yeah. There is going to be another elevator over here. I think we still take... A Solarian excavation team has run into an unexpected problem after unearthing a Prothean dig site. Oh? Hanar protesters have blockaded the dig site, claiming that artifacts of the Enkindlers, as the Hanar call them, should not be disturbed. The excavation team has appealed to Hanar representatives on the Citadel to reach a diplomatic solution. Okay, so is he in this area? It looks like he may be, based on how there is that exclamation point over here. I think this is where we ran into him before. Yeah, right here. There is Avaletta. Hey, back again, huh? I don't suppose you got any credits to spare. Uh, it, well, we have confirmed that you did, in fact, know our mother. It does raise some questions as to age-wise. I mean, I initially, I think, assumed that this guy was roughly our same age, but if he was an acquaintance of our mother, I mean, I suppose our mother is still an active member of the, what was it? I forget what the name of her ship was, but uh, suppose that means, you know, he could have been in his early days of service and she could have been a, a veteran, so to speak. And still, you know, their, their timelines could have crossed for that reason. But, uh, you did know our mother. I spoke to my mother. She told me about what happened on Minduar. Oh, did she? I wonder. People tie like prize hogs, locked in cages, clawing and screaming as they're loaded into cargo pods. And we couldn't reach them. The Batarian defenses had us pinned. Dozens died trying to advance. All we could do was watch as they hauled people away. I've been looking for 13 years for something to make that sight go away. What have you got, huh? It really sounds like you could use someone to talk to about this. I'm not going to give you money to drink yourself to death. You need to stop this. If you don't have a better option, just give me 20 credits. A good bottle of whiskey. Enough to stop the dreams. Uh, let's see. You should go to the Veterans Affairs office and see if they have someone who can help you. My mother said to go to the Veterans Affairs office. You're not the only one who's seen that brand of hell. They can help. The VAO? God. 
All right. If she wants me to go talk to someone, fine, I'll do it. For her. She always stuck up for me. Also, some aside, he has really cool gloves. She always was naive. All the VAO does is pump you full of chemicals. If she wants to talk, tell her she can reach me through the Citadel VAO. All right, well, hopefully, hopefully that'll help him out then. And based on how we do not have our journal highlighted here, I believe that means that we've technically resolved that now. Yeah. We convinced Savaletta to seek help at the Veterans Affairs Office. I think that's for the best. Okay. So, glad that we could wrap that one up there in what I think was uh, a good way. So now we'll head back to Normandy, and I think we'll head on out. Binary Helix has settled out of court with a Krogan group that had accused the Genetics Corporation of fraud. The Krogan group had contracted Binary Helix to perform studies with a long-range goal of curing their genetic sterilization. The group later sued for a return of investment money when the study produced no viable results. Oh, yikes. Hey, uh, please cure the species-ending plague that is currently plaguing us. Oh, you didn't find any answers? No solution? Uh, yeah, we want our money back. Okay. Are these guys that have deliberately been holding off on? I think we can at least begin this conversation. You'll see why I was holding off on this before. Let's see what they're talking about, though. Public disturbance. It's against Citadel regulations. This one is unsure why the other would not wish word of the enkindlers to be spread. So this guy is uh, getting all preachy, and this guy is saying, "Hold on, buddy, you can't do that here." Let's see what this is all about. Do you desire to learn of the enkindlers, or has the honorable CSEC officer enlisted assistance? Uh, do you have an issue here? Why is the CSEC officer harassing you? The CSEC officer requests that this one purchase an evangelical permit to spread the truth of the Enkindlers. Ah, okay, you need a permit to do this. Uh, can you just purchase a permit yourself? If that's all the CSEC officer wants, why not just buy the permit? The truth of the Enkindlers is universal. This one humbly believes that the truth should not be suppressed. Ah, okay. Exacting payment as a means of imposing limits upon the truth is an abrogation of this one's religious freedom. I see. I see. So then, in that case, uh, what exactly is the legality of all this preaching? So you're breaking the law by preaching without a permit right now? The CSEC officer states that preaching in this place is forbidden, and preaching anywhere on the Citadel requires a permit. This one humbly submits that it is not preaching to state the truth of the Enkindlers, and thus, no permit should be necessary. Uh -huh. You're not preaching to state the truth of the Enkindlers? Then what are you doing? I thought that was exactly what you were doing. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about the Enkindlers? So this guy, we've talked to at least one Hanar previously, but he is a Hanar. And uh, as a reminder, when we were reading the Codex entry on Hanar, we learned that uh, they grew up, or they grew up, they lived on a planet that had a lot of ruins of the Protheans, the same species that we were tracking down that beacon from, and they grew to treat those Protheans, or at least look up to those Protheans who I believe were extinct before they, uh, the Hanar existed. They just only saw the remnants of those Protheans. But the Hanar nonetheless treated this now extinct species as some kind of godlike civilization and refers to them as the Enkindlers. So when they say Enkindlers, they're referring to the Protheans. Who are the Enkindlers? Your people know them as the Protheans. Exactly. They are the true creators of this one's people. The Enkindlers raise the Hanar from ignorance into consciousness by granting this one's people the gift of speech. So that is the deal with you. I mean, we'd like to help. Let me talk to the CSEC officer. Perhaps I can explain the situation. This one would be most grateful for the assistance. Okay. Please let this one know if success is achieved. So that's the Hanar side of this story. What about from the CSEC officer? 
that Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Uh, so... Can we just let the Hanar talk? I think you should let the Hanar preach in the Presidium. The Presidium is a place of culture and respect. It should not be filled with zealots shouting their idiocy. Why should the jellies get special treatment? Every jellies. other species understands and obeys the laws. So this is why I was waiting. Because I knew that this conversation was going to have a an option for either Intimidate down here, which we obviously can't do because we don't have a lot of Intimidate points, or Charm. And I wasn't sure if we were yet going to have enough Charm to make this happen, but apparently we do. So, I mean, it doesn't appear as though he's causing much of any trouble, so it should be fine, right? Has anyone actually complained about this, Hanar? Not yet, but any good CSEC officer removes problems before they create a public nuisance. Uh, see, that's not really the way that works. And you've already warned him. You've explained the law. If the Hanar gets in trouble, it has nobody to blame but itself. I suppose I can tell my superior that I attempted a diplomatic solution. Some other CSEC officer can arrest the Hanar. It's no longer my problem. Thank you for your assistance. So there we go. It is, in fact, that simple. Just as long as you have the charm or intimidate to get the job done. The officer has left, and this one is free to share the glory of the Enkindlers. This one offers its appreciation. Ah, no problem. Happy to help. This one has little money, but it can offer this. Now, finally, this one can continue sharing the truth unimpeded. Let all races herald the glory of the Enkindlers who raised them all to enlightenment. And now he gets preachy, <laughs> of course. Where there was only ignorance, the Enkindlers gave wisdom. Where there was only silence, the Enkindlers gave the gift of speech. This very station is the work of the Enkindlers, their gift to all their children. All right, that apparently is all. We also just got the achievement for doing at least five missions with, that was Ashley. So now the only two we have left are Garrus and Rex, I believe. So we're making good progress there. And you know, once we've, once we've done all of them, then we'll definitely just go with whichever teams feel like they're the best fit for the job or generally synergize most with our skills as Shepard. And actually, hold on just a second. Because he said he didn't... Oh, once again. Pause menu. Um, he said that he did not have much in the way of money. Uh, we got a chunk of experience. I don't think he gave us any equipment, though. I'm actually not sure what he was referring to when he said that. It, it sort of implied that he was giving us something. Unless he somehow tangibly handed us a a pack of experience. Like, here you go. Oh, why, thanks. May have gotten a new codex entry as well. I didn't catch it, although it has been a while since we last looked at our codex, so maybe we'll catch up on that stuff soon. Either way, I think now we will truthfully head back to the Normandy and head out. So uh, that means wards and the closest place will be Chorus Den, or not Chorus Den. Uh, CSEC, I meant. Just check it. Just making sure you're paying attention. Okay. Uh, where's the elevator we're looking for? Here it is. So. In breaking news, Chairman Burns of the Parliament Subcommittee on Transhuman Studies has been kidnapped by biotic extremists. What? Uh? The biotics commandeered a freighter and were last seen in the Hades Gamma Cluster. Oh, we no were just over there recently. Yet been made. Everything's going on in Hades Gamma. Although, in fact, I think we may have. We may have learned about that one recently, because you also noticed how we didn't get a journal entry update there. Because uh, I think at the very beginning, we did not know about that. But then in an elevator on a previous occasion, we might have gotten some kind of notice about it. Because I vaguely remember that immediately after leaving that area, we then got that Stand elevator by, message. They are like, oh, okay, well, guess we'll head back over there soon. 
Okay. Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. So. Not sure there's too much else for us to do in the Normandy at this stage, other than head on out Message over to somewhere in. else. Oh. Patching it through. Commander, Ms. Algelani's story on you just aired. The is this the reporter we punched? The way you treated her. This yeah, it is. Straight from the Joint Military Command. Um. Yeah. So, like, see, but she was asking some really leading questions and trying to distort our words. So, like, she kind of deserved it. Sir, she was gonna make me look bad no matter what I said. Also, I kind of just wanted to punch well, a reporter. There are better ways to handle it than knocking her on her ass. As satisfying as it was to see. <laughs> just wanted to let you know what the response was back home. I won't keep you any longer. Fifth Fleet out. And I don't recall whether we've actually heard from that guy before, uh, but that's Admiral Hackett, and he is basically one of, if not, is he the, might actually be the highest ranking member of the humans, human alliance, and so that means human military. Oh, hold on, I, 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 I pressed the exit button because I wanted to leave the, uh, the Citadel. But uh, that's the wrong kind of exit. We need to zoom out. My apologies. So, we were in the Serpent Nebula. I mean, the only thing over there is the Citadel. So, there are a few things we can do here. Main quest missions would be either Novaria or Pharos. However, I think what we're going to do here is we're going to instead spend a little bit of time doing some side quests here. Possibly even the vast majority of existing side quests that we know about right now. And then, and only then, start heading over for some main quest stuffs. So, uh, probably will be a little while until we go over to either of those places. Asteroid 57 is actually a DLC that is built in to, uh, Legendary Edition. So, uh, that's one that... Not exactly sure when we'll choose to do it, but probably not on our immediate agenda either. Tell you the truth, I was kind of thinking, oh no, it was the Hades game we were in. We were in Artemis Tau, what was I saying? Um, I was kind of thinking, I was uh, talking about this a little bit before previously, but it does start to get difficult to keep track of uh, which areas we have and have not been to, which clusters we have explored the planets on. You know, in some cases we might check out the planets and see if there are any minerals we can get from them, but we might not actually land on ones that have missions, we might hold off for any of a number of reasons before doing that, and so, for that reason, and we might partially complete some areas, but then uh, leave some of them unchecked, and so for that reason, it can get very difficult to keep track of which areas you have and have not gone to, which areas you have and have not explored and actually landed on the planets from, so for that reason, I would kind of like to uh, go to the Artemis Tau Cluster and go to the two sections, because I believe there were four we've not yet been to, because I believe Nosos was where we found uh, Therum, so this is where Liara was. Then Sparta, I believe, is where we found the Thresher Maw on the, uh, the planet on which Admiral Kahoku's team got distracted by, or got drawn in by a beacon, and it was actually a trap to uh, get eaten by said Thresher Maw, but I don't believe we've either been to Macedon or Athens, so uh, let's, in the interest of basically just being able to put a, a big check mark on the Artemis Tau Cluster, let's see what's going on in Athens. Message for you, Commander. Just mm -hmm. came in over a secure channel. Shepard, this is Admiral Kahoku. I found out who set that trap for my men. Oh? The ones killed by the Thresher Moor. Yeah? Damn, I hope you get this message. It was a group called Serpers. An Alliance Black Ops organization. Top secret, highest level security clearance. They vanished okay. a few months ago. Dropped right off the grid. Nobody knew where they went or what they were up to. 
They've gone completely rogue, Shepard. They're conducting illegal genetic experiments, trying to create some kind of super soldier. Whoa. I don't have any proof. Sounds like I'm an Avengers level threat. One of their research worlds. I'm uploading them with this message. They're completely out of control. Somebody needs to stop them. I've done my part. Now it's up to you. I mean, this has anyone called Tony Stark yet? Probably the last you'll hear from me. Cerberus is after me now. I need to disappear before they find me. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, on another note, we could also check out Salamis. The geographical properties of Salamis have been scanned from orbit, and, uh, I must tell you, the planet is remarkably made of meat. But little else is known about it. Due to its thick carbon dioxide atmosphere and proximity to the energetic star Athens, the equatorial daytime temperatures have been known to turn the surface molten. Uh, molten meat, that is. The crust is composed of iron with deposits of platinum, uh, or, yeah, platinum group metals. So it is, uh, hmm. Oh, whoa. It is, uh, 520 degrees Celsius, which is rather hot. It's a little toasty. A little toasty. You know, I, uh, not really a salami guy, but if I was, I think it's fair to say I probably would not prefer to have my salami toasted at uh, 520 degrees Celsius. Probably just a little too much for me. But nothing else for us to do there. And so I don't necessarily have anything in mind for either of these two sections within the Artemis Tau Cluster. It is largely just from an organizational standpoint making life a little bit easier on ourselves so we don't need to try to, you know, sometime in the distant future, recall which areas we have and have not been to. We can more easily know, yeah, we've been here, we've done that, versus this area's new to us. We still need to do everything here. None of that in-between gray area stuff. This planet is uh, neon blue, which is pretty cool. Like the Hanar homeworld, Proteus has more than 90% oceanic cover. Incredible heat thrown off from Athens raises global humidity to 100% creates constant cloud cover, and powers colossal typhoons that rage across the surface year-round. Hot, humid, and storm-wracked, Proteus' rare combination of oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere and carbon-based biosphere nevertheless recommend it to colonization. A pilot program is studying the possibility of colonies below the ocean surface, safe from the worst effects of the weather. So, there is in fact a colony founded here, with a population of 12,470, the capital is Ithaca, uh, not to be confused with Ithaca, New York. Uh, which I believe is a fair bit larger than that. Also, is probably not on a distant planet. Although, it is... Well... It's just a, a little bit more atmospheric pressure. It's a little warm, you know? 34 degrees Celsius is not unbearable. And the gravity is a little stronger than it is on Earth, but... As long as, you know, you're below the surface and not getting fried by this super strong star, then in theory, it does seem like this planet perhaps has some potential for colonization. And that is one of the interesting things about all of the planet exploration that I was talking a little bit about earlier, how it is fun to think about like, oh, okay, you know, if I was in Shepard's shoes and I could explore the galaxy on a whim, you know, sure, other world-saving responsibilities, yes, but it would also be really interesting to see what plants are out there and just get a sense as for what the world is like, you know? Are there other places that could potentially house life that we've never discovered before? Are there places where existing uh, species that we know about could expand and, like in this case, create a suitable colony? And in this case, it does appear as though that is perhaps the case. But anyways, there is something we can survey here. And we found a bunch of oxygen. That sure, also sounds good. So let's just take a look around this asteroid belt here real quick, see if there's anything unexpected showed up. Again, it won't show up preemptively, but if we do around here, we can verify, and it doesn't seem like there is. There will not always be something, in fact, I feel like most of the time there isn't. We got a little bit lucky in that I think the first two times we checked, we did in fact find something. But that is uh, a little unusual. Nausicaa. This is, uh, this planet belongs to Nilfgaard. Traces of sodium in the atmosphere give Nausicaa 
its overall dark gray color, but it is otherwise a typical hydrogen helium gas giant. An abundance of water vapor in the upper, excuse me, upper atmosphere account for its white clouds. Other than that, it's uh, it's just B. It's a gas giant. But there is, uh, despite it being a gas giant, nothing for us to examine there, or nothing for us to loot from a mineral standpoint. Then we have Cersei. Cersei is a modestly sized hydrogen helium gas giant with traces of sulfur and chlorine. These give it its striking yellow-green tint. As the development of the Proteus colony continues, Cersei will likely be developed for helium-3 mining. Another interesting thing is, again, just drawing all those connections. Okay, so if we're going to have a colony on this planet, that means that, you know, we might need to also draw some resources from neighboring planets. And in this case, okay, we can get what is a potentially valuable fuel source from this planet that could help us with development processes on the colony. We can survey this planet. And in this case, we get, well, not so surprisingly, helium-3. Like it said. And then the last planet on this outer orbit, where are you? Over here, Pharos. Not to be confused with Pharos, F-E-R-O-S, which is one of the main quest planets that we were talking about earlier. This one's different, I assure you. Distant Pharos has seen only a cursor examination by an unmanned probe. It has a trace atmosphere of nitrogen and argon. Its surface is mainly composed of tin with deposits of carbon. Deeper craters have been partly filled by ice, suggesting there may be a significant amount of water locked up beneath its frozen surface. A large, ice-bright crater in the southern hemisphere makes the planet visible from the inner system, leading to the planet's name. Okay, I'm not sure why that leads to the planet's name, but it is quite cold. Minus 176 degrees Celsius, and uh, although gravity is decent, uh, there's also almost no atmosphere, so understandable that this is uh, not a planet that is gathering much attention. We can survey it, though, and we get a Turian insignia here. Scans of the planet Pharos revealed an abandoned base on its moon. The recon team found nothing of interest, but much of the debris was marked with the Magna Colony insignia. Okay, and that is another one of those quests similar to the Prothean data disks that we've seen previously in Solarian League of One tags, where just as we're exploring stuff, we will occasionally uncover some of those. But that is everything in the Athens cluster. Now, there's a non-zero chance, especially given how there wasn't actually any planet for us to land on there, that perhaps we're done there, but perhaps we'll find on a future occasion we'll learn about some quests on one of those planets and we'll have the chance to explore it later. But there will certainly be, uh, and by explore, I mean land on it later. However, there will certainly be systems where we will not have any uh, planets on which we will do things, so it might be that we're just never going to have to go back to Athens again, but we'll see. Time will tell. Lastly, we have the Mastodon here. Let's travel to this location. Okay, no message this time. We have Shargila. I was going to say, does sound familiar. I do recall this being a place we can land on. Shargila has a very dense atmosphere of ammonia and oxygen. Its temperate surface is mainly composed of al alumina, alumina, alumina probably, with deposits of sulfur. Palm buoys in the system have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Shargila uh, has an extensive silicon-based oxygen breathing ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with fine silica, silicon dioxide, dust, respiratory byproduct of the world's higher animal forms. High-speed surface winds, often laden with abrasive silica dust, present a hazard. In areas where the wind deposits a great deal of silica, footing can be treacherous. EPAs are discouraged. And I forget what that stands for, but that's basically landing on the surface is discouraged. So, uh, however, it is possible for us to land here. It is, just to compare things to Earth, atmosphere pressure is 39 Earth atmospheres. That is ridiculous. That is insane. Uh, that is a incredibly thick atmosphere. I Actually, I'm curious what the atmospheric pressure is on uh, Venus, just for uh, comparison purposes. But uh, it is a pretty moderate temperature, 25 degrees Celsius, and uh, almost exactly the same gravity as Earth. So. Uh, 
in those senses at least, fairly similar. But you see, yeah, there is a level one pressure hazard. Like I said, that is a ridiculous amount of atmospheric pressure. So uh, this would be, if we were to land on here now, the first planet on which we would experience any kind of uh, atmospheric hazard. And yes, in fact, those do exist. And uh, I forget as to whether we get an, ex an explanation whenever we land on such a planet. If we do, then, you know, I'll let that do the talking. If not, then uh, I'll describe it further. Either way, I think at the very least, we're gonna want to explore other planets here first before we actually land there. We may even wanna delay that. Uh, it is for that reason, because it has that hazard a little bit more complicated to land there. I also don't recall what is actually on there. We could double check our journal, see if we know of anything that's leading us there. Otherwise, we can land there and figure it out on the fly. But at some point, presumably, there will be some kind of quest that is directing us straight to this planet. So there's potentially reason to wait for that reason. As for Orolon, it is an enormous terrestrial planet. Half again, what? Half again the size of Earth? What do you mean? Despite its thick atmosphere, the weak output of the red dwarf Macedon leaves its surface biting cold. Crust is mainly composed of silica, but significant deposits of iron and other industrial metals are present. These loads may provide rich enough be profitably mined despite the heavy gravity. So that's an interesting point, is so they're saying that this star is very weak, and the first planet we were looking at, we were just saying now the temperature is almost the same as on Earth, and yet it's the closest planet to that star. Think about, obviously, the closest planet in our sister, solar system, Mercury. Way too hot for anyone to be uh, having, or well, anyone to set foot on it. So uh, then as soon as you go out in this system to the second planet, it's already minus 197 degrees Celsius. And uh, other than that, gravity, uh, it's relatively normal. Atmosphere, relatively normal. Other thing is even, technically speaking, the planet we were just looking at, which had a relatively moderate temperature, had a relatively moderate temperature with an extremely thick atmosphere, and usually the thicker the atmosphere, the, uh, the hotter the planet, because the atmosphere can retain that heat coming from the star. So uh, that first planet was just what was a moderate temperature, but only because it had a humongous atmosphere, even when it was that close to the star. It just goes to show you how weak this star presumably would be. But uh, anyways, we can surface this, survey this planet, so let's check it out. Matriarch's writing is recovered. You were scanning the planet Poralan when a strange signal came from orbit. Navigator Presley determined that the signal was from an ancient beacon. Your salvage team brought the beacon aboard and found one of Matriarch Delinaga's writings in its storage compartment. I believe that's our first time getting a Matriarch's writing. Uh, this is, again, another one of those types of quests where we, when we're exploring and examining planets and going out and opening up crates and what have you, we'll occasionally come across these types of things, and there are a set number of them scattered across the world, and eventually we will hopefully find all of them. And we'll get experience credits every time we do. So that's Poralan. The next planet out would be Patavig. And Patavig is the second of the Macedon system's giant terrestrial planets, and by far the more interesting. Most of the surface is covered by a vast sea of liquid ammonia, in which a unique aquatic ammonia-based biosphere has developed. While the frozen continents are largely bereft of life, a rich bounty of complex organisms, many larger than a human, flourish in the chilly, toxic seas. Very interesting. While dreadfully inhospitable to humans, Atavig is suitable for colonization by the Volus. Negotiations between the Systems Alliance and the Volus patrons, the Turian hierarchy, have made good progress. Very interesting. So, it's ammonia based, which, yeah, is not terribly compatible with human biology, but for other species that are, uh, some ammonia-based species, like potentially the Volus, and Koreans also have a, a very different chemistry, if you will. I think the Koreans do as well. Uh, so for them, it could theoretically be more hospitable. And uh, again, very thick atmosphere, 
extremely cold. Gravity's not so bad, but presumably if you're below the, uh, what is it, below this ammonia sea, then perhaps it gets warmer. But nothing else for us to examine here, unfortunately, because it does sound like a cool place. Then we have this asteroid belt, and again, there we have it. Look at that. We do, in fact, have something here. It's a metallic asteroid. Let's check it out. It's just a simple, average asteroid. Nothing else about it, really. But we can survey it. And we get a light metal while scanning this asteroid field in the Artemis Tau cluster. We detected a large deposit of titanium. Or, that's good to me. There is a chance you can occasionally even get multiple things out of the same asteroid field, asteroid belt. And uh, this is a large enough one that there's a non-zero chance that could happen, so just to be sure. Seems like that was it, though. Then the last planet out here is Fargaloos. But of course, Fargaloos. I really looked green on that, uh, <laughs> that more zoomed out scale. Now it is very much an orangey red. Fargaloos is a standard hydrogen helium gas giant with an abundance of airborne hydrocarbons. This one we can also survey. And here we will get, not so surprisingly, a gas deposit. Large concentration of xenon. For all you noble gas lovers out there. Okay, so we've now explored everything except for Shargila. And before we go on here, because I'm not even sure we do want to do this yet, let's at least see if we have any other quests that are saying that we have something going on in the Artemis Tau, or possibly even specifying the Mastodon Cluster. I mean, anything in the Artemis Tau Cluster that we know about, because this is our last section uh, of the cluster, if it doesn't specify a location, we can pretty much infer that this is Sargila over there is probably where that would be, that quest would be leading us. Obviously, if it's pointing us toward the Mastodon Cluster, then that even more so suggests that that's what we're looking for. But uh, let's actually, Let's exit here. Let's just check our journal. There you see we got 344 experience from getting all those materials, and I didn't see just how many we got in terms of our credits. But for our journals, this is going to be sorry writings. So that was our first that we just picked up there. And like I said, there's just, in this case, 10 of them total that we'll be looking to pick up. Current insignias, there are 13 of those. Same idea. Found one of them, but we'll want to track down more. And then we also just learned about Cerberus, that call from Admiral Koku not long ago. He's given us the coordinates to a research facility run by the Cerberus group. We need to investigate the planet Binthu to find out why Cerberus is unleashing alien monstrosities in the Attican Traverse. Okay, so I don't believe we've encountered this Binthu planet just yet, but we'll keep an eye out for it. What we're looking for here is anything that says... Artemis Tau Cluster, or Macedon Cluster, let's see, or is it Artemis Tau System, Macedon Cluster, I, like I said before, I uh, don't recall, but uh, definitely not that, that's technically on the Citadel. Uh, Hades Gamma is not where we are. Uh, not League of One Medallions or Slarian ID Tags. Uh, Artemis Tau- Oh, and Sonic Dantius has hired you to rescue her sister Dahlia from a mercenary group working out in the Artemis Tau cluster. So, this in that case is almost certainly the quest in question. So this doesn't specify, and it, actually it does. Go to the Macedon system in the Artemis Tau cluster, so there's your answer. Macedon system is what you refer to that level of specificity. And then Artemis Tau is cluster. I'm going to forget that very soon, but I will, <laughs> I will attempt to commit that to memory. And infiltrate the mercenary base. Okay. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. So, trying to think as to whether that is something we want to do now or come back to later. Because, again, originally the reason why I was deliberately trying to make a point of doing everything we can do in this uh, Artemis Tau... Uh, cluster kind of right that time um, was so that we could make a point of knowing that we were done with it and we could just forget about it more or less and know that we don't need to worry about oh have we explored all the planets here if we're looking like if we're looking for our last uh, Asari writings or Turian insignias or uh, medallions 
as you can imagine, towards the end of the game, if you need one or two more of them and you've explored 90% of the galaxy, you can pull out a lot of hair from your head if you're wondering, like, oh gosh, I feel like I've done everything, but somehow, somewhere, I missed one of these things. That's in particular why it's really helpful to know where you have and have not already been, so you don't need to quite literally explore the entire galaxy a second time around. So, uh, however, on this occasion, because we do have a quest that is going to point us directly to this place, uh, it's going to be pretty obvious to us to head back to that specific spot whenever we feel like it. So, on this occasion, it's not super necessary that we do this right now. Uh, and I'm also failing to find where that quest was. It was the Sana Dantius slash Dantius one. Hmm? Started with UNC though, I believe. So, sorry, diplom uh, sorry, diplomacy. Yeah. So I vaguely recall that this might be a little bit of a higher level mission. So I think, or at least moderately more difficult. Like I was saying before, just by having the hazard in that area alone, it does make it a little bit more complex. There are some things in the future that we will potentially get our hands on that can make that type of experience easier to deal with. So part of me feels like perhaps it is worth waiting until we get some of that stuff to make life, well, yeah, a little bit more straightforward for us on this occasion. But uh, in that case, that means we'll be looking for somewhere else to uh, cause a little trouble or perhaps, perhaps fix a little trouble. All right, I mean, we are a specter. We are a specter, you're right. So, and then I proceeded to, instead of zoom out, just outright exit. But uh, yeah, so tell you what, I think we've done just about everything in Artemis Tau Cluster, and uh, we, or, okay, now I've already forgotten if it's a cluster system. <laughs> like I said, I will forget it. But um, we've done just about everything that we're looking to do here, and the one thing that we do still want to do we can look at our journal and know immediately where we're supposed to go, so that takes away the, uh, the mystery out of the Artemis Tau Cluster. So, uh, that makes life easier for us going forward. Then, let's take a look actually at our journal, rather than just blindly exploring the galaxy, which we can do. But, uh, let's be a little bit more direct than that. Uh, let's see. So that's back in the Citadel. Anything UNC stands for Uncharted Worlds, so that is generally going to be a, a decent path for us to follow. I think, let's see, we have the Fanatical, Fanatical, that's how you say that word, Lids, uh, Biotics in the Hades Gamma Cluster. It's not a bad idea, we could go there. More at the, the Signs of Battle and Asari, or not Asari Diplomacy, but the Protein Data Discs, Asari Writing, Strain Insignias, those are not really things that you're going to directly target as much as just as you're going about exploring, doing your business, you're going to occasionally encounter those things, and, uh, same with the valuable minerals, and uh, over the course of your playthrough, you will eventually, if you're thorough, get all that stuff done. Then, yeah, we do have a lot of things directing us towards the Hades Gamma Cluster. New vids indicate that a survey team in the Hades Gamma Cluster, this is what we were hearing on the, uh, in the elevators, recently dropped out of contact. Go to the Hades Gamma Cluster and find out what happened to them. That's definitely an option. A man named Gareth asked you to look for his missing brother. Gareth fears his brother's ship may, be, may have fallen victim to privateers who are traveling through the Strenus system. This was the guy that we met in the uh, Citadel Tower a while back. That's also definitely an option. But I think... I think why don't we head over to the Hades Gamma Cluster, because we definitely do have at least a couple of things going on over there. Right, once again... <laughs> Uh, that's the exit button, lids, not the zoom out button. Here we go. And conveniently, for what it's worth, Hades Gamma is... I mean, it doesn't actually matter at all, but it is right next door. And whoa! As it turns out, well. Well, it looks like there's only one system here. However, there is this guy. The Farinata system. Sneaky Farinata system hanging out far over there. And this almost looks like that's a system. That little uh, bluish light over there, but that is actually outside the range of how far we can even move our cursor, so that is uh, not anything that we are going to be pursuing here. So, it means we just have these two, 
Antaeus, and we have Paranata. So let's maybe just start with Antaeus, and we'll see where this leads us. Presumably, I mean, there's probably one of the quests is going to be in one of these systems, the other one's going to be in the other. 